Hello, good evening, everyone. Welcome to another Let's Talk Health with Leap to Health Ministry. Always a pleasure to have you here on a Tuesday night as we talk health. God wants us to be healthy. God wants you to be healthy. Do you know how to take care of any health concerns that you have, especially simple things? We're not getting into the more technical illnesses. And even so, we still have to learn about certain diseases and what to do. As Seventh Adventists, I'm sure you know that the time of no buy, no sell is coming. Once the mark of the beast is passed, we'll no longer be able to buy or sell unless we decide to bow and go man's way instead of God's way. But if you choose to remain faithful to God, you'll not be able to buy and sell. You won't be able to go to the doctor, to the hospital, to the clinic, to the pharmacy. What will you do then? Do you know how to survive? Do you know of natural remedies that you can use? Do you know what is a disease? Do you know its causes, its prevention and cure? What will you do then? And that is exactly why we do Let's Talk Health. We hope to equip people with the tools they need to become their own doctors. We need to learn to take care of ourselves because the time is coming, we'll not be able to access health care. Do you believe that? I believe that. I'm a Seventh-day Adventist and I believe that. So a special welcome to you all, wherever you're joining us from. Thank you for joining us as we will be sharing in Sister Joyce's testimony this evening. I've heard just a little bit of it some time ago, and I've always wanted to hear the full story. And we do that twice per month. So if you know of somebody would like to share their testimony of overcoming or just God's grace, keeping them through their health challenge or whatever situation, and they'd like to share, then ask them to reach out to us and we'll be more than happy to have them share their testimony here on Let's Talk Health. If you're joining us from Jamaica, welcome. From the US, welcome. From Canada, welcome. From Dominica, welcome. From any other Caribbean island or in the or in Europe, Africa, welcome, welcome, welcome. Always a pleasure to have you. Those on YouTube as well, the same goes for you. Welcome. Thank you always for being with us here. Brother Shard will be doing our opening prayer. We're going to be having our theme song as well. And this evening, we're going to be listening to our guests at the appropriate time. Brother Shard, over to you, my brother. Eternal God and Father, we just want to thank you for this opportunity that you have given us, oh God. Lord, we are grateful for life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this opportunity where we could minister, oh God, and share, O oh Lord, our experience of your goodness. Heavenly Father, we are grateful. You have been so good to us, O oh Lord. And sometimes, O oh Lord, we are blinded. The enemy, O oh Lord, seeks to keep us silent. But we are so grateful, O oh Father, that you have broken that silence and allow your daughter, O oh Father, to speak of your goodness towards her. I pray that hearts would be touched, O oh Father, and that, O oh Lord, every one of us will say to ourselves, Lord, if you can do it for your daughter, then you can definitely do it for us also. So I pray that your Holy Spirit would encamp around us, soften our hearts, and may you bless tonight's proceedings. For this I ask and pray in Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. The only hope for better things is the education of the people in right principles. So what is disease? Disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that results from a violation of the laws of health. Now, in case of sickness, there are four steps that should be taken. Step number one, the cause should be ascertained. Step number two, unhelpful conditions should be changed. Step number three, wrong habits should be corrected. Then step number four, nature 
is to be assisted in her effort to expel impurities and to reestablish the right conditions in the system. You know, in Revelation 12 and 11, it says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. So we will now listen to our theme song. And after the theme song, we will go right into the interview. I am the God that healeth thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. I am the God that healed thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and healed your disease. I am the Lord, your God's name is more powerful than any disease you can name tonight. You might have received a horrible report from the doctors and told you your disease is incurable. But you know what? There's hope tonight. There is hope because God's promised that He would heal us. I want you to put His word on your lips tonight. Sing his word back to him. And see if his name isn't more powerful than cancer, than heart disease, or any disease that you can name tonight. Oh yes, he's your healer. Let's sing it to him. You are the God that healeth me. You are the God. Good evening, everyone. You sent your words and you heal my disease. You are the God, my healer. We praise the Lord because he is our healer and continues to heal. Sister JV, you are looking just wonderful. Your skin is glowing. You'll have to share with me the tips and the secrets that you're using on that face because it is just glowing. For those who joined us late, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. This evening, as you know, we're sharing a testimony. Sister JB Money will be sharing her testimony. I'll be asking the questions. She'll be supplying the answers. 
And after the formal part of the meeting, you'll have a chance as well if you want to ask her any questions or if you'd like to comment on whatever it is. So this evening, Sister Joyce Brown is joining us from right here in Canada, but she will tell us some more. So first and foremost, I'll be asking her to tell us where in Canada she's joining us from and what is the name of the disease that she is dealing with and to tell us what it is, because it's a new word, I'm sure to many people, they've never even heard of it, and maybe mm -hmm. wondering what is this disease, what does it mean? So my sister, where in Canada are you, and what disease are you going to be sharing your testimony about this evening? First of all, Sister Angela, thank you for having me, and for allowing me to come and educate others as the Lord has educated me with this disease because my sister, I didn't know anything about the disease and for years, I did not know what it was called. All I knew is what I received from it. And so I am coming to you live from Alberta, Canada in the city of Calgary. And the name of the disease is called trigeminal neuralgia. And if persons want to know more about it, they just have to go on their device and look for the suicide disease. Oh, interesting. Well, we'll be hearing more about that. So you're going to be talking with us about trigeminal neuralgia. And as you rightly said, nowadays we have information at our fingertips. And so if you want to hear more about it, jump on Google. I'm sure for many persons, it's entirely new. They've never heard of it before, but this evening we're going to be hearing about it. She said it is called the suicidal disease. And I'm sure it is called that because many times people are going through these different diseases and they just don't know what to do. There's no cure. It appears there's no cure. They're confused. There is a point of frustration, depression, mm -hmm. and it, it to the point where it might even drive them to just end it all because they don't know where else to turn for help. They've exhausted all means, all medication, all doctors mm -hmm. visit, and there's just nothing else to do. And so they reach that stage. But one thing we know, and that is only trust in the Lord, there's always hope and he's able to keep us through whatever situations we're going through. So Sister JB, how long since you've been living with this disease and when were you diagnosed? Give us a background and where are you from? Are you from Canada? What's your background? And I am a Jamaican born and bred. Okay. Uh, but I think I have lived out my Jamaican years in Canada. All right. And how long ago since, and what were the symptoms? What led up to this? How did you know okay, that you first... had this disease? Okay, um, this disease started bothering me since in the latter part of the 90s. And I didn't know what it was. And of course, I went to see doctors and neurologists and you name it. At that time, I had just discovered that I was suffering from lupus. And I imagined that lupus was a childhood disease that not even my parent knew what I was suffering from. And so everything that was happening to me, I thought it was deriving from this lupus. And that's about the time that I decided not to take any more conventional medicine. And so my doctors, of course, was furiated with me and I ride out the storm with God at my right hand. And I learned the name of the disease I was suffering from 2010 when I went to an expo at the general conference session. And I went and sat in a dentist chair. And that's when I knew the name of the disease I was suffering from. Okay. Well, thank you for that. So what happened when you went into the dentist chair? You just went to do a checkup, just a normal, regular checkup. I just, and, and, did I you, just, mm -hmm. and did you explain to the dentist some of what you were going through and you were able to get some help right there? 
I went and I sat in his chair and I said to him, I don't need a cleaning. I don't need a filling. I just need you to answer some questions. Because, and he looked at me and he said, what are your questions? And I start to explain what I was experiencing. I was experiencing at that time, a lot of shock in my mouth, in my jaw, in my tooth. And I have, by then I have seen several doctors and neurologists and no one could explain the name or what it was. As a matter of fact, when I started seeing the doctor explaining what I was going through, he sent me to see a psychiatrist. So I saw a psychiatrist for two years and we became good friends. So he said, Joyce, after a year, he said, Joyce, I don't see why he sent you to me. I looked at him and I said, are you being paid to see me? He said, yes. I said, well, we'll continue. So we meet each other. And um, I was at the time still in school. I was doing my bachelor's degree. And so my doctor said, oh, um, you're a mother of three and you're in school and you're working. So I am sure all of what you're experiencing is stress. And so he sent me to see the psychiatrist and said, what was happening is all in my head. And so I went. I stayed with the psychiatrist for two years. We talked about some of his clients because of the field that I was studying in at the time. And we sat and we talked and we laughed. He introduced me to his wife. And I was able to share some of our books with him because he was not Jewish as my doctor was and everyone else in that building. He was a Christian. And so we were able to share certain things and I was able to share some of our books with him. And of course, I parted company and we kept in contact until I migrate to this province and this city. Okay, and, so mm -hmm. complete your statement, my sister. Yeah, so that's when I lose contact with him. And um, going back to 2010, as I sat in the doctor's chair, the dentist chair, he said to me, when I told him, explained to him what I was experiencing and I cannot get an answer from any of the medical facilities that I have attended and seeking help. He said to me, everybody thinks you are crazy. I said, how did you know that? He said to me, a lot of people came to me suffering from what you are suffering from. He said, do you know the name of what you're suffering from? I said, no, I don't. He said, it's called the suicide disease. Wow. And so he then took his card, wrote the name of the disease on it, which is trigeminal neuralgia. And he said, if you were here in the state, I would be able to help you but take this back to your dentist. Mm. And so I did that. But it was like a miracle, me knowing what I was suffering from that no one else could tell me. Yes, sis. And it makes a, a world of a difference when you know exactly what it is because you can do your research. You can look at remedies because God has given us a pharmacy, his pharmacy. And so knowing what, the disease is, now you know exactly what to do, even if it means that you become your own doctor, because the time is coming when we must become our own doctors. So tell us, what were some of the symptoms? What was it like? Well, my sister, this is <laughs> what I went through and what it brings on. I pray that not even my worst enemy, if I have such, I wouldn't, ex I wouldn't want them to go through this. And every day I thank God that it's me and not one of my other siblings. Wow. So tell us about the symptoms, my sister. The symptoms, it starts for me. I don't know how others that might have it might have a different um, trace of 
how it started. For me, it started with a numbness on the left side of my face. And that numbness, like if something is on my face, I could not um, discover it until I go in the mirror or somebody bring it to my attention. And so I um, went to my doctor, of course, and, and explained to him what I was experiencing. There is this numbness and I couldn't get rid of it. He sent me to see a neurologist. They did MRI, they did CAT scan, all of those things but came up with nothing. So in his mind, it's got to be in my head because there is nothing that they could see that was happening to me. And so from being numb to start getting shocks in my mouth, like electric shock, but they were not, um, they were not, very, um, what should I say? They were enough to shape my body at times to the point where I felt uncomfortable in social groups and start to sort of isolate my friend to the point of one person came to me and said, Sister Joyce, you're not yourself. Mm -hmm. You're acting a little strange. And I didn't realize that someone was picking up and my behavior. And the shocks come more severe that sometimes I'm sitting down at the table with friends and, and family and it would just shock and my whole body would shake and it was became noticeable then. And I could not explain to anyone what was going on. So it was very hard. During that period, I was Seeing my doctor and my neurologist, the doctor, of course, wanted to medicate me. And for sure, I refused. They told me they want to make me feel comfortable. I told them that I did not want to feel comfortable. I need to know what was going on in my body. Right. And they are the scientists. I am relying on them to say what's going on, because it would make sense going to them if they don't know what's happening to my body. But they insist <laughs> that I take the medication mm -hmm. and it will help. Mm -hmm. And I insist that I'm not putting any medications in my body without yes. knowing what was going on with me. Right. And, you know, the doctors, they like to tell people that it's in their head and they do not take people's concerns seriously. I saw just the other day, not this particular disease, but a young lady who had some health issues. She went to the doctor and she was telling them about her concerns. They did not mm -hmm. pay much attention and she died. And mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we have to be saying to people if you're talking to one doctor and that person is not listening to you, take matters into your own hands. Find other persons who can listen to you or do your own research. Because a lot of these doctors do not take things seriously, especially when us, people looking like us, mm -hmm. because they believe that we, we're over-exaggerating. We're exaggerating when it comes to mm -hmm. feeling pain because according to them, we don't feel pain the same way like other people. Mm. And so they don't take our pain seriously. But if somebody else, the moment they just you know, maybe just make up their face, then it, it, it appears to be serious and they're ready to help. So take your health into your own hands. If something is wrong, if the doctor is telling you it's in your head, get other opinions, seek help elsewhere or do your own research and try to come up with what the situation is. If you were to listen to certain doctors, and the response is, we might end up dying. So praise God that you did not listen, but you continue to ask questions. At any point in time, did you take medication? Because I know of a situation as well, where this friend of mine told me about some stuff. He, he was just hearing this. It was not really ringing, but just stuff in his ears. And it was so loud to the point where it was disturbing him. He couldn't sleep. And he went to the doctor. They didn't know what it was. They did x-rays and so many different tests they could not see, but he was feeling this thing going on in his ears and they were mm -hmm. giving him medication. 
to, he said he started taking it. So my question to him was, if there's no diagnosis, they don't know what the problem is. Why are you taking mm -hmm. medication? And right. then that now caused side effects. And this is what they do. So I'm happy that you are more educated when it comes to health and your health. You take your health in charge where you don't just take the doctor's word for it, but you question them. At any point in time, did you take medication at all? Or you said no, and you did not take it? My sister, from the minute I discovered that I had lupus and the doctors was forcing me then to take medication, I refused. And when I um, discovered this thing that was happening that I didn't know what it was, I also refused. So, of course, my doctor, who was a dear friend of mine, I took care of his grandma, I took care of his mom, he loved me so much that he used to pack me up with a lot of medication. And I was feeling happy. That's when I just met him and he was very nice, good bedside manners and everything. I was bringing patient to his office, more people come. He's so nice and he's very healthy. He tells you not to drink alcohol and he tells you not to smoke. This is a good doctor. And so I had a lot of friends that flocked to him. So my doctor was my friend's doctor, people from my church doctor. I just brought them in because he was so wonderful. He turned away from being that nice mm -hmm. guy and decided that I, when I come to his office, I'm keeping him back from his patient. So that means he denounced me as a patient. And so I continue to refuse the medication and he continued to hold on to what he held on to. And I just continued to trust God to guide me, trust God to be my deliverer. And that's where I stayed, having others praying for me, praying with me, and those prayers kept me afloat. Amen. And so hearing that you have lupus is also something new, but that has never reached a point where you were stop or it prevented you from working or doing anything normally through the lupus i had lupus i had thyroid my body was just breaking down and i realized years after like decades after that my body was breaking down because i had lupus from an early age and i was a worker alec and i did work around the clock i did not take rest came into this country and was paid little and nothing and so it was like making night and day work in order to pay my bills and stretch my hands to others. And that's what life was about then. So the lupus did not stop me, not, not that it couldn't, but I did not allow it to. I, every, <laughs> every day I went to work, I worked day and I worked night and I would go to my doctor's office and he would um, do some tents on my, my body in my shoulder and neck and those places. Even then, it, he was doing it and being paid for it, but he didn't let me know that I also had pinched nerve in my neck and shoulders. And Ali said to me, the work that you are doing is too heavy for your body. You need to find something else to do. But he never explained what was happening. Wow, interesting. And so even though your body was breaking down, but you still continued with work and everything, because, for example, when Sister Dawn shared a few weeks ago about her lupus, she was at the point of death. They had given up on her until she discovered for herself that she had lupus. Mm -hmm. But you having lupus, do you still have lupus? And has it always been manageable and never really impacted your life to the point where you became ill and couldn't work? Well, yes, I it impacted my life to the point where I became ill, but couldn't work was not a factor for me because I need to work. I was a mother of three and a single mother. And so even when I was studying and had to write my papers and go sit down and dictate what I had written because people could not understand my handwriting, I had to go and sit with them to do my typing so I could take it back to the professor in a decent manner. And all of that was stress for me because I was working 
and studying around the clock. Sometimes I'm going to bed three in the morning, getting up back at five, taking care of my children's need and run off to a job, then from that job to school, running back home, making sure that food was in the house for my children and making sure that there is someone to receive them when I could not. And so even when my body feel weak and was shutting down, and there were times, as I reminded one of my oldest boy that there was time when I crawl on my pores just to get them ready for school. Because at that time I had irritable bowel syndrome. So that's another story in itself. And so I, all of these things was happening to me and at, with the irritable bowel, yes, I took treatment for that, which did not work. Of course, I took myself off of that. I had asthma, took myself off of the medication. Of course, took myself off Centroid for, of course, the, the um, thyroid and started doing my own research. Those days I, I, did, I was not computer savvy, so I didn't know to go look on computers. So I bought books. And the first thing I bought was a medical book that tells me about all the synthetic and the scientific drugs. And so as I read the medication that was given to me, that's when I knew that some of those very medication was poison to my body. And I started to eliminate. And as I go along the way, I decide to just stop taking certain things, stop all medication with the exception of antibiotic, if in case it's needed. And then later on, as I do further study, I realize that that is no good. So I learn the natural way and what to use instead of antibiotic. Well, I'm going to be asking later on about the natural remedies that you have been using, but just, I was counting on my fingers, all the different diseases you mentioned that you had. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. You talked about asthma, thyroid mm -hmm. issues, IBS, mm -hmm. lupus, mm -hmm. adenoti, and the trigeminal neuralgia. That's mm -hmm. a lot of diseases for one person to manage. That's right. And yet you're a single mother working, mm -hmm. studying, mm -hmm. having mm -hmm. children home and the whole thing having to deal with life. How did you survive having to deal with all these different diseases, illnesses at the same time? My sister, as I look back, it is God. Amen. And thank God that I am a Seventh-day Adventist. Thank God for the the natural remedy or the health message. I thank God for that. And I thank God for human angels that he sent. One of my sisters, she's passed and gone, but she was there for me. I remember I had a ruptured appendicitis and I didn't even know the doctor say, go to the doctor, send me straight to the hospital, but I couldn't. I went and did my grocery. And I took a taxi and went home with the grocery, make sure all the clothes in the house that need to be laundered was laundered, cook my children's supper, have it there ready. And a friend came, two people as a matter of fact, show up at my house to take me to the hospital. When they called and found out that I was still home and asked me, what are you doing there? Mm -hmm. And so God sent someone and the person said, I will stay with the kids tonight, go. And if you have to stay over in the hospital, stay. At that time, I didn't know what was wrong with me. The doctor did not tell me, just say, go straight to the hospital. And uh, all I knew, I could not walk much. And I was in pain. And I, everybody was looking at me, I said, no, this is not you, this is not you. And I knew it wasn't me, because I am a fast walker. People have to run in walking with me. That's how I move. And that was me at that time. And she came the next day, took my children to her house and care for them there. So God has sent, that's how I manage. It's not me. I look back and I don't know how I did what I did. So I knew it wasn't me. It was God. 
and the earth angels that he sent my way. Amen. Wow, sis, that's a lot for one person. I'm just sitting here and I'm saying, wow, on top of all the five diseases I counted then, here now you had another problem. But God is truly amazing. So for the trigeminal neuralgia, how mm -hmm. do you manage that? Do you still experience the symptoms that are shocking in your mouth? And I, what are I you still, doing? I still do experience some form of, but not as severe as over a decade or so. Um, every now and then, it will flare up. But thank God, he's always on track with me. So 20, uh, before I go to 2019, I um, the, the worst episode took me, I was working at this facility where I was caring for children with, um, I, I was working in the school system, but it's a private school, not a public school. And I was a counselor within, and I was dealing with a lot of stress. They, these are young people, young adults, and children that are emotionally disturbed. And so the, the, the just dealing with them, dealing with the parent, dealing with um, outside facility, and all of that really get to my nerve. And I didn't really know how to manage this disease at that time. Now I knew what I had. I, I didn't even, at that time, knew what I had at first until the, after I went to, um, until 2010, I knew what I was dealing with. And I, I didn't know how to manage it then as best as I could, because I was this girl who, would be on prior lines overnight and, and working on the prior line and getting up, having worship in my house and took off for work. And I figured I was strong to do all of this. Oh. And so after learning what the disease was and I had to leave that job, it was too much stress for my entire body. And so I took a less paying job but I, I thought it would be better. After a while, the disease started to manifest itself even more. Because part of that job was physical and part of it was um, theoretical. And, and so it was, it, it, and the distance that I have to go each day and every day it's in a different field. So it, it did not, the stress was a little less than where I was before, but the stress was still there. And so um, I had, an, I had, a, I went to work with this trigeminal neuralgia all through until 2013 when we had a big flood. I was taking time off from my job to go to a um to one of these retreat in Idaho, and there came the flood, and I of course I was depending on the gray greyhound to take me there, and that because of the damaged road it did not happen, so of course I went <clears throat> I went back to work, and I had an attack at work. What was that like? <laughs> So what happened, I did not know at the time that cold and wind was also a factor. It was a stimulus. And so I thought it was just brushing my teeth and, and chewing food. I didn't know that there were other elements to, to, the, um, to its trigger. And so I was in the building. We were all working from the building, most of us. And so um, the, the eater went out of function and the place became very cold. So I couldn't speak. So it affects my speech. Um, I had to put my coat on and that was not enough. I was begging them to put the, I couldn't take care of my client anymore. 
And so I was asked to go home. I did went home. And um, of course, I went straight to my doctor and he gave me a letter and said they should give me a um, sedimentary job to do. And of course, that was not what that place <laughs> made up of. So they said, I cannot help you. So go home and take care of your health. Of course, I took the Friday off, went to my team leader, took the Friday off, figuring, okay, I will rest and all will be well, went back to work the Monday and went in the field. I didn't go to the office. I straight went straight into the field. And the Tuesday, I went into the office. I was called. And that call, that was it. So, of course, you know that whatever you had, as benefits, everything went. Mm. Everything went. The way they handled it, they could have done differently. So because you were sick and it might require you to take more time off from work and you would not be able to function efficiently in your job, they let you go. They let me go and um, and decide that when I, when I get better, I could come back, but go take care of myself. And but it's it's the way in which it was done, if they did it differently and work things out with me, it would have worked differently because I have been going with my sick self all the time and I pushed to get my work done. So no one could say I had to do her job. And so I found an, a naturopathic doctor. Of course, I went I was. Adamant at this point, I lost my job. God, what is this? How do you expect me to survive? I have three children, two in school. How am I going to help them? And I was crying and I said, no, God, this is not fear. This is not fear. How could you allow this to happen? You kept me all the time. But, you know, the, the, the long and short of it is that God was saving me. Amen. God was saving me and I didn't know it. And so I came home. I called some friends. I called my, some of my sibling and I said, pray with me. Please pray with me. Pray for me. I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, and um, I was standing over my sink as I prepare meals for my children coming home from school and their part-time jobs. I was um, crying and I said, God, what must I do? And he said, don't worry. It's not the paycheck that is taking care of you. It's me. And when I said to him, what about those who rely on me to help them here and there? He said, the same way I love you, I love them too. I remember going to church the Sabbath and gave my testimony. And this sister looked at me and said, Sister Brown, had I said that to you, you would mad, but you cannot be mad with the Holy Spirit. And I said, my sister, not at all. And I am going to say this in everything that we are doing through the thick and the thin of life, trust God. Trust God. Because he is true to his word. And when you are, when you cling to him, when you have no outside forces, nobody to turn to, you must turn to God. Amen. Amen. So my sister, when you're experiencing the shock in your face, on what side of the face is it? And based on what you, what was explained to you, mm -hmm. is it a shock? Well, obviously, because the it's a shock, it's a shock, like an electric shock. And what like some of face do you experience? In your face. So, oh, okay. Oh, the, this disease comes with many different um, flavor. Okay. And so you will feel things happening in your teeth as if you have a toothache. So first, as I said before, when it started, it was on this, the, the left side of my face. And it was, it started out with a numbness. A numbness as if you went to the um, the dentist. Yeah. 
and you receive the um it's not anesthesia but um we call it the clariform mm. which that's not the right name either but whatever he does to numb your face that's what it felt like okay and so that's what i started out with before the shock started setting in so that was the first sign so the shock started setting in at a later date and then as time rolls on, it becomes more severe. And so I um, I continue to um, manage it by keeping my body still. When the shocks come, you, you have to stop your breath. You just stop your breath mm. because it's like somebody is put an electric wire on you and just shocking you. Oof. And so I just stand up, stop my breath. Even if I'm at work, just stand still, shut my breath. Sometimes people saying, Joyce, Joyce, because they figure I am in a trance or something. But I just stop my breath to stop the pain so I could continue my work. So wow. it takes a few seconds and then it wear up, but it feels like forever when it's How often happening. Does that happen in a day? Oh. Often do you get a shock throughout the course of a day? When it is, uh, okay, so this this disease works this way. Movement can cause it. Okay. Um, You could turn your head and you have it react to the, the you turning your head. You um, try to drink or eat or um, the length of your hair brush against your face or even somebody's breath or somebody using a fan. So I could not be anywhere near um, uh, air condition or fan, even somebody, or sometimes even people talking and oh. their breath is eating my face. It triggers. So it became more severe when um, it moves from just not only the shock, but it feels like someone take a piece of coal from the pot or a firewood, those of us who, who have been, who was raised in the islands and we know what it's like to have a fire stick are those who have um, a, a furnace. A, a wood furnace, burning stove, a wood, wood burning, burning stove. that's yeah. right. Yeah. You take the live fire and just someone took it and just set it on your face and it's burning through your skin and wow. you just stood there. You cannot move because if you move, it becomes more severe. So it alters your mobility at that time. And so you just have to wait for it to wear off. As I said, it's for a few seconds, but it feels like eternity. And there's another one like someone come over you with a knife and just stabbing, 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 stabbing. And you can't run because guess what? If you run, you're running away from yourself. <laughs> and so oftentimes I have my feet, my toes stuck in the floor and pressing against the floor with my feet and stop my breath so that I can survive. The other one is like a pin, like somebody take a needle and just sticking you, sticking you, sticking you all over your face with it. Wow. And then on top of that, your lips, your lips become parched. So the, the, your, your top lip and bottom lip cannot touch each other because when they touch, it triggers the pain. There are times when I could not eat for days. Sometimes I would get a straw, do smoothies, and try to drink. And sometimes not even the straw works because it is too painful. I, I learned through the years how to set my tongue in my mouth and try to let everything go on one side. But sometimes I cannot pass my lips. Right now, I use cocoa fat on my lips so they don't get to where they would have otherwise go. So I use cocoa fat on my lips to keep them 
from cracking up as they used to. So as you, as I go along the way, God shows me different things, what to do, how to do it, and how to manage it. And so I, you ask, what are some of the herbs I used? I reach out to many of our facility, and they did not know this disease. So they could not cater to the disease. And so um, there is this sister in Idaho. I call on her. And when I call on her, she said, oh, my goodness, that's the disease that I heard that is uncurable. But I can send some things to you. And you can use them. Of course, I'm buying stuff in America. And so it was very expensive. And that's another story in itself. Mm -hmm. I, Sen and I got them. They give me some ease. They give me, you know, they help me to a certain extent. The thing with this disease is that you use certain things and after a while it gets immune. Mm -hmm. And so it does not work the second time around as efficiently as before. Mm -hmm. And so my big breakthrough came, I think it was 2019, 2020. One of my very prominent everyday prior line. Before that, two persons sent this thing to me. And um, those two things came to me and they were talking about how to look younger. And of course, I said, me, I am not here to look younger. I need to look towards heaven, not to look younger. So I'm not interested. So then the prior line leader sent out a notice to say we are having Thursday night would be family night. So we are having someone coming on to do this, to do a presentation. Guys, come on at such and such a time. So, of course, I went out, did grocery. Of course, somebody took me because those days are not as good as now. Praise God for his goodness. And so I came home and while I was washing the things, that because, of course, COVID was in. So I was washing the things to put them away. The spirit came and said, aren't you going on the prior line? And I'm saying the prior line. What's on tonight? Then I, I rushed inside and I grabbed my phone, set it up and realized, didn't hear the first part of the presentation, but the latter part of the presentation. And while, while I sat there listening to this lady giving her presentation, I said, I must call this woman tonight. And I wanted to ask her one question. What is your number? Are you willing to give it out on the line? Didn't have to ask the question. God just speak to her and she just gave out her number. And so I called her. And we chat for maybe an hour. And when I heard the price, I said, no, sir, I can't afford this. Anyways, I talked to the Lord. And I called my niece and I said, this is this thing. And the way the lady said it works, I need it. You have to sign up to be a distributor. She said, auntie, you know, I'm not business minded I, and stuff like that. I can't be bothered because people, this people, that people did. I said, just trust God, just trust God. Anyways, with the long and short, she did sign up. So 20 20 came. I started on the um it was called it's called I Hercules. Of course, I pitch it everywhere because guess what? It was a saver for me at that time. It had 44 herbs in it, and it's a liquid. And so I took it, started using it, and I have my wonderful friend who um we go everywhere together then. And she came and picked me up that one day. And I said, hmm, I am going to try to see if I can be out there 
without because I'm taking this thing and they said, oh, it works well. And I know it's working for me indoors. So I need to try it outdoors. So I did just that. And my sister, it was windy and I was outside. She said, Sister Joyce, be careful. You're going to trigger the pain. I said, I'm just taking a test run. So I did that test. I came home, we went out another time. It was cold. And my body cannot take cold. When you speak to people with thyroid problem or autoimmune deficiency, cold is a factor. Not to mention trigeminal neuralgia, that cold triggers it. The wind triggers it. And so God helped me to bear through with this disease using this concoction. And it was helping me. So of course I spread the message because it helped me. It should help everybody else because I am dubbed suffering from the worst disease known to mankind when it comes to pain. It's the worst pain ever. And so it should help everyone else with pain. Thank God. It helped me. Didn't take away everything that I have, but everything else I could live with. The trigeminal neuralgia is the worst. And all I want to do, get better, go back to work. Get better, go back to work. And that was when, since you started taking that in 2019 during, or 2020? 2020, 2020. Because I remember that sister, I had her when we were doing SOP, when I was over on SOP. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. I had her on and she had talked about the products. I know a lot of persons uh -huh. had reached out to her because I, the way that she sold, I mean, she talked about it uh -huh. really seemed as if they were helpful. And I believe other persons may have contacted her and got help as well. So well, my sister, that, I, I went to her. I went to her and asked for her to come and 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 um and that platform. But the evening when she came on, I was not there because I had to. I had a doctor's appointment. By the time I came back, it was over. Okay, so what well, you've been taking that now since twenty twenty? Are you still? I on took. It I and... started it since twenty twenty. No, I am off of that. Okay, and how are you managing now with the TM? How is it now? And are you back to work? So I no, I am not back to work. Nobody will employ me simply because this thing is, what do you call it? It's not, it's, it, I am an unreliable worker. That's what I'm dubbed as. I'm unreliable because this thing can attack at any time. It's, un it's unpredictable. It's unpredictable. So, yeah, That's at right. Point in time. Yeah, yeah. That's right. And so I cannot go out and work in uh in an establishment because yeah. because of that and so um i took this thing up until 2023 two years yes okay and and um i am still wondering was it 2020 or 2019 that i started on it it might have been 2019 cuz i feel that i was getting relief um it should have been about 2020 yeah yeah so it, it i it could be 2019 when i started okay. on it 2019 december mm -hmm. when i started on it and so i took it up until um 2023 um summer and i was doing well as well as could be. So I started doing my active missionary work. And so what I um, allow myself to do, even when I'm in pain, I still go out and visit as long as there is somebody to take me and be there with me. So when nothing can come out of my mouth, they could take over, speak or sing or pray. And sometimes I fight through the pain and do what God wants me to do. And so... I was helping this brother and I went to see him. And the, that day I took him down from the floor, took him, take him for a ride down and brought him back up. I spent around four hours with him. And I decided, I knew I had to go get something. And I left and said to him, I will be back because I like to go. So he could, I would, you know, push him to eat, encourage him to eat something. And so I left 
went to um, pick up some stuff that I needed and then to go back, go home, do a little bit at home and go back to see him if no one else went so that they could encourage him to eat something. I felt so tired. So I called my friend in Montreal and I said, girl, I am so tired. I took the train down here, but I wish there was somebody just to take me and carry me home. She said, what make you so tired? I said, I don't know. I said, I was at the hospital for four hours. I don't know if that is it, but this is the worst I'm feeling. And she said, I pray to God that that thing is not coming back on you. And I said, I, I hope not, but I don't have a problem with it. And when was that, my sister? When was that? That was um, July, the end, coming to the ending of July. What month? What 2020, 2023. Okay. And so I said to her, I saw some buses and I pray that one of those buses is going in my area because I don't have the strength to climb up to the train, even though the train would be faster. And so I, we chatted until I reached where I'm going and I'm telling her how tired I felt, how weak my body felt. And I um, came out, got the bus, which I give God thanks for, head on home. And I came home and that weakness was still present with me. And I, I couldn't shed that weak feeling. I, I took a hot bath and I um did my put, you know, turn on the, the cold top and I get some hot tea and I drank. I have my many oils and of course I rub myself and I have my concoctions here. And so I started to use not everything, but few things just to say maybe my I was doing too much, my body ran down. And so it was. I end up with a terrible bout of COVID. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> oh, COVID. <laughs> yes, ma'am. It was, I have never felt anything like that. It hit me for six. I don't know if I caught it in the hospital or where, but I think I let my guards down and it took effect of my body and after with all the coughing and everything it took after three weeks I went to see my doctor and he told me I have 10 more days to go through it before the cough and everything leave and so I have to resort to my concoctions and everything and fought with it with God's help I got over it but when the cough em emerged from my body there comes trigeminal neuralgia oh boy. back again in full swing. And I thought it was just a little something happening, but it will go away. So I'm using my eye Hercules and I'm spraying it, but I realize it's not happening. And one day, I think it was the Thursday, went out shopping with a friend and didn't realize how windy it was. I had to, I, uh, she... I see that she started panicking because I was going through hell and mm. she was able to witness that. And I wouldn't want to put anybody through that again. And she didn't know what to do. I came home and I had to walk back way into my house. I almost fell. And I came in and for the longest while I had tried germinal neuralgia for a long while, but that I could not hold back my emotions. And so I asked the Lord, I said, God, you, I thank you for those years that you have given me. I don't know if you are going to help me through this one, but I thank you for what you did before. You brought this for me. You let those uh, um, scientists make up this concoction and you sent it right to me. And here I am but no help now. And so I started using all the things that I used before and I'm getting minimal help. And I decided I'm resting, I'm resting, I'm resting, I'm not doing much. And so I stayed for months away from church, just relaxing, resting my body. And one night I went to bed 
after I talked to God and went to sleep. Unlike other people, I listened to music before going to bed. And the music put me to sleep. I listened to sermons before going to bed. And sometimes the sermon put me to sleep. And so I woke up and the pain was on. And I said, Lord, what must I do? And I turn on my other side to get rest. Because, you know, the left side is the side that you lie on. You should sleep on. So I turn on my other side to get some ease. And I the sheet could not touch me. Nothing could touch me. And so I have to set up my pillow and put a towel over it so no draft could hit the face. And try to sleep. I went into a little doze. I was not fully asleep. So someone came into my room and held up a glass. I always have a glass of water on my night table. Held up the glass and said, what you need to put in this is some myrrh. And I said to myself, where am I going to get myrrh? I don't have it. I remember said, you reaching out to me and asking me if I had the myrrh. That's right. That's yes. right. And you yes. didn't have. Yes. And it's and very so, expensive. Yes, it is very, yes, very expensive. And so I start to call other people. Can you find myrrh? Can you find myrrh? I need myrrh. I didn't even think of frankincense. But then when I look back in the glass in the dream, it was frankincense and myrrh. And so I said, maybe I'm supposed to use them both. So I started seeking but could not find. And someone said to me, Sister Brown, I am going to Jamaica. And I'll get some for you. So two persons went to Jamaica and I asked both of them to bring back frankincense and myrrh. <laughs> but during that period, one of my nieces came and said, Auntie, I am going to a presentation on essential oil. Do you want to come? I said, yes, girl, anything to get me out of this house because I become a hermit, right? And so any chance to go out, I go. And so she took me. And blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord most high. Okay, sis, so we're about to wrap up now. So what I want yes. you to tell me, so just a I, moment here, what mm -hmm. I want to tell me now is where you're at at this point in time with the disease because the time is going and we want so to this, stop this is coming. This is okay. coming. So let's wrap with, it up. With the myrrh, uh -huh. I did not get the resin as was shown me in the dream right. yet. Okay. I But going to this essential oil presentation, right. I realized that they have frankincense and myrrh oil right. that is ingestible. ingestible. Okay. And yes. so... I right away purchase both. And to God be the glory. Here I am speaking to you. Amen. And when was that, sis? That was, oh boy, when did I start on this? I think it was it, yeah, it was last year, somewhere in December or early January, somewhere there. Okay, so you discovered that you instead of getting the resin, you got them in the essential oil the form. Essential, the you have been essential. taking those uh -huh. and it has brought great relief. So at this it point has, in time, you're uh -huh. experiencing relief from the pain, the shock and everything else. Everything else. Praise God. Everything Praise else. God. The only thing that I get every now and then through my teeth, it's a little bit of sensation which with my teeth, trigger something so I have to be very careful what I put in my mouth and how long I speak for and where I am how warm the atmosphere is so to God be the glory
Amen. Amen. So you will continue to manage it by using the oils because those are available to you. Since this has been such a powerful story, and I know for many persons, it's a new disease. They've never mm -hmm. heard of it. Mm -hmm. And you know what, sis? I believe this is helping to bring awareness to people of another disease because people out there might be experiencing these symptoms, not knowing what it is they're living with. And same thing that happened to you, the doctors could not help you. Maybe they are being told it's in their head and the doctors cannot help them. So I'm happy that you have shared. So anyone out there, if you are experiencing any of these symptoms, you don't know what it is, doctors can't tell you what it is, check out. It might just be trigeminal neuralgia. It's mm -hmm. an unusual and very rare disease, mm -hmm. but yet it still exists. Mm -hmm. How can you know is by educating yourselves on the different diseases, symptoms, and causes. And then mm -hmm. in that case, you might have an idea what is going on in your body because so many people have to help know to diagnose themselves because doctors out there, not all of them can diagnose what is it that we're going through. So I'm really happy that you were able to share. Yes, this year, final. What, yeah, there's something what I want to say that persons who might be suffering from these disease might not yeah. know. Yeah. What I learned later on from my uh, one of this neurologists that I saw here that they themselves do not know they MRI does not show them what's happening wow. because they do not know what is the cause right they only have the band-aid to mm. give so when you go to them and explain to them what you are experiencing, then they will know what it is that you're suffering from. But the MRI, the CAT scan, all they are looking for to make sure there is no tumor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it is not to say, oh, we are looking for trigeminal disease. No, it's what you experience will let them know what you're suffering from because this does not have a tell you sign. They, What is it? What causes it? Oh, is the myelin sheet mm -hmm. that maybe it's rub off, so it's bare. Whatever sheet was there covering the nerve, the, the it's nerves, gone. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so you have to build back the myelin sheet yourself because the doctors ain't going to do that for you. And they don't know how to do it. They don't know how to do it. And even if they know how to do it, they won't because you need to be an object for money. Yes. Yes, yes. So yes. I give God the glory and I give him the praise. As I do my research, I find things that are very helpful. Yes, I now have the resin of the myrrh and the, the frankincense, and I'm using them both. And thank God for what everything is doing to me. And I do not stay on them all the time. I try to give myself a break. I also use celery and cilantro and parsley to make a green drink. I don't stay on that all the time. I do that for 21 days and then I get off it. You ask me if I still have lupus, it's flare ups every now and then when I lay myself careless, but I did not take doctor's medication for lupus or trigeminal neuralgia. So those, I manage with God's help. Wow. And natural, natural remedy. Amazing. You know what I want to go back, touch back on a little bit before we end is the fact that in a dream, it was in the dream, the Lord told you what to use. Mm -hmm. And that is how God works and speaks. Maybe not to everybody. For some people, he might send a message with somebody. He might manifest it in a different way. But for you, God mm -hmm. told you that in a dream and there it is. You went, you got it and it helped. It is as this young lady shared back about a year ago that she had a dream as well. She was suffering from some particular disease. And in that dream, she said she was told that I would be able to help her. And I don't even think that at the time we had even made contact yet. And mm -hmm. when we eventually made contact and she reached out to me, and I walked her through the process and she did get help. And she shared, she testified that at the graduation of her medical missionary training last year. And I had no idea that she had that testimony and she didn't tell me, she did not share it with me. So when she shared it, 
I was surprised to hear that testimony. And there you go. And so the Lord can speak to us by dreams, by mm -hmm. any method that he chooses and which he believes that we will listen to. Because maybe if somebody else gets that in a dream, they might just brush it off. So that's not their way of tuning in and listening to the Lord. But he mm -hmm. sent your healing to you or what could help you because it's not right. really a healing, but what is helping you to manage this mm -hmm. particular disease. So mm -hmm. to God be the glory and it is for us to listen when the Lord speaks to what is a matter of life and death. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you so much for sharing such a powerful story. And as you continue to manage this disease, we will keep praying for you. How is the thyroid? Because I can notice the swelling at the... Yes, uh, I, um, the thyroid is working, but not at full speed as it should. So I'm still working on that. And of course, the, the nodules are getting more and more. They are multiplying. So I need now to work on it. So I just tend to get some essential oils to mix together to start using on that. And I am sure the 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 myrrh and the frankincense will be of help as well. Amen. But there are other herbs that I am taking, not not um what should I say, not religiously as I should, because when God sends me something, I don't mix it with too much of other things. Yeah. Okay. I try to use what he sent me and see how it works. And then move from there thank you sis and continue with sharing the message continue with the mission work that you're doing i know you do that really just you send devotionals you share all the information that you'll get that is your ministry that god has blessed you with so even while dealing with challenges you are mm -hmm. involved in sharing the message and bringing hope to other people may god continue to bless you my sister and i know when jesus comes and you are caught up to meet him in the air and your body, this a vile body, mm -hmm. change this mortal body will be changed to immortality. No more of this trigeminal, no more thyroid issues, no more lupus, none of these, but a brand new body you will get. And that is my hope and prayer for you. Sister, would you like to close off in prayer? Oh, yes. Father God, we thank you so much for your love for us. We thank you for your patience with us. We thank you for your power to heal us. Forgive us, Lord, wherein we have come short of your glory. Thank you for your love and your mercies. Thank you for helping me. And I pray, oh God, that this testimony might be a sentiment to someone to help them in their struggle with their finances, with other ailments, and just help them to trust you even when they cannot trace you. Because you are a God that is very intentional. And you will not leave your children desperate or hopeless. And so, great Jehovah, I give you honor, I give you praise, and I give you glory. Thank you for those who came to hear this testimony and i pray oh god that what they get from it will able to share with others who are in same like situation it might not be trigeminal neuralgia but it could be something else and so lord thank you for this evening thank you for all the listeners thank you for the privilege to speak on this platform thank you for sister angela and her team i pray for blessing unlimited and I pray that you will bless her ministry as she continue to bring you up front to one to others in order for them to know who you are Amen. and what you can do. I bless your name and I praise you. And I ask, Lord, that you will continue to use me as an instrument to help others come to know you, whom to know is life eternal. Thank you for my trials. Thank you for the darkness because you are the light. Thank you for being God Almighty. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you again, my sister. What a blessing. Awesome, awesome testimony. Isn't God good? Isn't he amazing? I hope and pray that you will continue to get relief day by day, and then you'll come back later on and let us know that at this point in time, it's been quite a while. You have not had any more symptoms and you're just enjoying life without any more pain. I, When you were talking about 
it feeling like the using a piece of firewood and sticking it since I could I literally felt it I could feel the pain because mm. I have a very low threshold for pain and so when I hear that I'm literally feeling the pain which is I was just wincing I as you rightly said you wouldn't want to wish that on anybody and mm -mm. I hope and pray that nobody mm -mm. has to go through that either I could just feel the pain that you're talking about but God is good God is wonderful I see one person's hand up Yes, yes. So I'm going to take Marcia. And Arlette, you're asking about the oils. You can reach out to me because JB, you and I will talk about that. And Arlette, you can talk to mm -hmm. me and I will let you know how to get the that the ingestible. Mm -hmm. The ingestible oils. oils yes. A lot of the oils that we use are external uses That's and right. not to be ingested. Mm -hmm. So it's ingestible ones. So Arlette, you've got my WhatsApp. You can talk to me. And please remember, today is Tuesday, right? Yes. Remember to join us Friday evening for our devotional and Sunday evening for our Bible study. We're going through the sanctuary, a journey through the sanctuary. Please join us on a Sunday evening. And the next week, Tuesday evening, we do this all over again with Let's Talk Health. Thanks mm -hmm. again, Sister JB. Wherever you guys joined us from, always a privilege and a pleasure. Those on YouTube, thank you so much for joining us. And Abigail says it's a horrible feeling. Abigail, it seems as if you know what she's talking about. And yes, I see somebody else saying that they've got that shocking in their head twice before. It's not a nice experience at all. She mm. said, thank you so much for sharing. So others are over there saying, yes, they know exactly what you're going about. And please, what natural remedies you can use for thyroid. Sister Florence over there on YouTube it's not just any one thing for thyroid. It's a whole program that we can create for you. It comes in with your diet. It comes in with, mm -hmm. the, in fact, the eight laws of health, implementing those. Mm -hmm. And then we do have the natural remedies. There's this young lady. In fact, she's out in Alberta as well. She said, JV, when I was down in Jamaica in 2021, she had just started. It was just started to grow. And I had created a program for her. Mm -hmm. And she did it for maybe about a year by lifestyle changes, the natural remedies, and it really, really did help her. So it's not just one thing, Florence. Mm -hmm. over there, it's a whole program and you have to stick to it. It's both internal and mm -hmm. external. You have to apply what we'll, we'll create or teach you how to create, whether it's a poultice or whatever you're going to be used for the external, put that on while you're using the remedies internally as well so i can't just tell you to take one any one thing it doesn't work that way all right marcia i'm gonna take your hand i'm not seeing any more hands we're gonna take marcia and then we're going to say good night go ahead marcia good evening everyone i just oh can you hear me yes go ahead marcia. oh yes i just wanted to thank god for this testimony um, I actually just went on to a WhatsApp and saw the, the flyer and decided to listen. And what happened is just when she talked about the frankincense and mergers now, I'm going through a health challenge right now. And someone I spoke to just Sabbath afternoon mentioned to me about the frankincense and myrrh. And so, you know, when, when the Lord is telling you something, he gives it to you two, three times just to solidify what he's saying. So, you know, I thank God for her, what he has brought her through and, and that she's still giving God thanks. Mm -hmm. And for even um, with me telling me, go ahead with the frankincense and myrrh. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Lord. What's this, mm -hmm. JB? You know what I remember back in the day? Old mm -hmm. people used to use frankincense and myrrh. It was like the cure-all. And indeed, they are cure-all because even in cancer, you know, we're not giving any... Yes. Let, me, let me make a disclaimer that here mm -hmm. we're not making recommendations. We're not medical That's doctors. Right. Mm -hmm. We're not giving any... Recommending any treatments for any diseases. But That's these, right. as we know, our great great grandparents use frankincense and myrrh. They were literally the cure all, and they're used in many different diseases today. Even some of those diseases that they claim that has no cure, sure, that's right, that have no cure, they mm -hmm. are used 
to help with these different diseases. So my sister, if you have been told about it, do your research, by all means, go ahead. God has given us and made mm -hmm. these for us to use them. Sister JB, after you reached out to me, then I checked my supplier for the resin. And when he told me the price, I think you get maybe five pieces of the resin or three pieces. I don't remember how many pieces. And it was so expensive. I said, there's absolutely no way I could buy that thing mm -hmm. and sell it back. It was just ridiculous. So if Yeah, it's for you to make a profit from it. Mm -mm. Well, it's expensive. It it, 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 even just to sell it. Even just to right. sell it. Alone. Sell it, yes. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's, it's just expensive. But yet at the same time, these are God's miracle cure. Yes. And that's why he has yes. made these natural remedies. We're coming up. I'm going to be coming on with a program and this is going to be teaching people how to survive in the crisis with by using natural remedies because the crisis is coming. The crisis is coming. Look out for this flyer and we're going to be talking about the different natural remedies and how to survive in the crisis. We'll, we have to learn how to be our own doctors, like it or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a must. I see Abigail. Marcia, thank you for the question. And go ahead, Marcia, if the Lord so impress upon you to use the frankincense and myrrh by all means. God has given us these. Listen to Abigail. him. Yes, JB, quickly, Abigail. Let me take Abigail and then go ahead, Abigail. And then you can give your final word, JB. Abigail, go ahead. Hi, good night, everyone. So you, you all are hearing me? Yes, go ahead, Abigail. I am from Trinidad. I didn't hear the whole testimony. My best friend messaged me because she knows that I I got I had those um symptoms. Mm. And she asked me, Is this what you suffer with? And then when I checked the flyer that she sent me, I realized. So in 2021, I was going through a period where I was very stressed out. And I started to get these shocks in the left side of my head. Mm -hmm. And it went on for the entire weekend. So like uh, literally every minute I would get two shocks. Zzz, like, you know, like, and I didn't know what it was, but I started to cry. And I asked my sister to come and take me to the hospital. Um, they just gave me a, a thing to sign up for the neurology clinic. But I ended up going to see a private neurologist and he told me that it is a mild, a mild case of trigeminal neuralgia. Now, I have mm -hmm. a, a past pastor who had that and um, had to go and do surgery. I think it was in Hopkins University or something. So uh, we, I remember we had to, to do different things, serious fun same. So And he was like, Abigail, rebuke that because there's nothing that you would want to have, right? So that went mm -hmm. on for that weekend and then it stopped because the doctor told me, do you keep the fan on you? I say, yes. So he said, you need to stop. Mm -hmm. And then he said, um, you hardly rest since I need you to turn off your router, put your phone on airplane mode and all those things, go to bed by eight o'clock. And I did all of that and including not keeping the fan on me and it went away. And this year um, in... February, we went to camp. I wasn't stressed out. I was actually relaxed and everything. And it came on in camp. So I couldn't take part in anything. I was there in my tent and this thing just kept shocking me in my head, shocking me in my head, shocking me in my head. And it went on until camp was finished. I had to go back again to the neurologist because I was like, okay, this time I'm not stressed out. Uh, and I already keep it fun on me. I mean, I do keep it on, but not, you know, directly on me. And... Uh, he somehow, I felt as though he couldn't explain it this time, what caused it, you know, but I did the same thing. I tried to get sufficient rest and make sure that the phone isn't on and that kind of thing. And it, it never came back again. So those are the two times in my life I experienced that. But I'm interested in this um, frankincense and mu. Um, You guys will seem to be from Trinidad, but I am from Trinidad, so I'm... I'm wondering where I could get this or how can I get this, you know, because I didn't hear the whole testimony. I just heard just before you spoke about the, the frankincense and moon. So what I'm going to suggest is that JB, you're good at connecting with people. I yes. think you and Abby should connect the fact that there's something in common. And that is why we have this program. She, she where... can give um her number and I just could a second. connect with her. And that is why we have these kind of programs where we can, you know, make the connections with people. So there we go. Sister JV, no, you have a new connection with Abigail. You guys mm -hmm. can talk because just in case it were to get worse, 
the best person to help you is somebody who has been in that shoe before, somebody who has experienced what you're experiencing. And so here you go. And even before it gets any worse, JB, you can connect with her. That's I'm not sure if you want to share it. Do you want to share it publicly or do you I want sent to it to her privately already? Perfect. All right. Wonderful. She sent it okay. to me privately. So I don't internet. know how that works. It's on, just on the, the chat. chat. Just look in the chat. You'll see it says direct message and you'll see it in red and you'll be able to take it down. So look in the chat. Okay. I see around 11. That's Sister Angela. I'm not. Um, okay. All right. Ask. Abigail, send. you can send it to me and I'll give it to JB. I'm going to put mine in the chat because mine is a public number anyway because it's a ministry. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then... I'll send it to JB. So send it over to me on WhatsApp and I'll just send it to her after the meeting. All right. Thank you everyone for participating. Oh, I am getting it now, my sister. I just saw the chat. And, Perfect. Oh, Those on I YouTube, just saw thank you as well mm -hmm. for watching. Please give a like and a thumb up. But please make your comments and please share the video. Many persons out there might be experiencing similar symptoms. Not mm -hmm. knowing what it is, but tonight we know and I'm happy to have been educated concerning this particular disease because I did not know much about it myself. So to God be the glory. Great things Amen. have done. Praise the Lord. Is this a um, WhatsApp number? Okay. Sister Abigail, is, is this a WhatsApp number? I'm sure it is WhatsApp, so maybe.